explained to me, uh, you know, the, the, actual, the history of the Bible itself, yeah? Interesting question. I want to ask that, you know, the authenticity of the actual Bible itself. Why is there a difference between the New Testament and the Old Testament? So, it's a serious question because I'm interested to see what you'll say. Because no one's asked you that question, I don't think. Have they asked you that Are we question? talking about theologically? No, we're talking about historically looking at the documents. For example, in the... In the British, it's a British library, isn't it, where the yeah. Codex Sinaiticus. Yeah. Is it true, as a Christian, I'm asking you as a Christian, is it true that there's differences in the Old Testament and the New Testament? Genuine question. Well, when you say between the Old Testament and the New Testament, what, Verse what specifically like, are you Well, what I heard was... Are you talk, go on. Let me, say, let me tell you what the claim is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I said, it's not my claim, yeah, I, yeah. I'm asking you information yeah. on it. That there's verses that are in the Old... Uh, sorry, sorry, not Old Testament, New Testament. In the KJV and the NIV. Yeah? Are we talking about quotations of the Old Testament in the New Testament? We're talking about verses that are in the KJV, King James version, version that are not in the NIV. Is this you understand those? Yeah, you, yeah, know, yeah, you know about that, yeah. 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 And and that exist in the Codex Sinaiticus. In, in exist in the Codex Sinaiticus. Yeah, you know the Codex Sinaiticus. So you, what are you talking oh, sorry. about? Are you talking about the Common Johannes? They don't exist in the Codex Sinaiticus. They, they I don't rephrase that. In. Sorry, my mistake. Are we talking about the Codex? Are we talking about the Common Johannes? No. We're talking about the Codex Sinaiticus. Can we, There's in the British Library. An, can you give an, ex, an example <laughs> to discuss? Because uh, the only one that of I, course, of course. For example, you know the, the story of the adulteress. Yes. So that's that's in exists in K, KJV, correct? Yeah. But it's not. It doesn't it's exist in the NIV. That's correct. Is that the reason it doesn't exist in the NIV? Is that because it doesn't exist in the Codex Sinaiticus? Right. So the Codex is now. Just, I, I understand your question. Now. I understand. That's fine. Your that's fine. Let me just clarify for myself. Yep. The Codex Sinaiticus itself. Do you believe it to be the oldest? I mean, uh, I mean, just complete New Testament text that we have okay. today. Okay, so th there's yeah, multiple questions there. Oh, sorry, sorry. Actually, it's just one question. I'll simplify it, yeah, just to not complicate things. Do you believe the KJV and the NIV, there's a difference in there or not? Right, okay, so that will be the question that I address. Firstly, I'd like to say to everyone on who watches on SC Dawa, um, the, 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 the question implies many things that are not necessarily true of the Christian faith. Um, the, the premise of the question is sound in that the NIV and the KGV do have different verses. So, so one example of that would be in uh, John chapter 7 verse 53 to, to John chapter 8 verse 11. You, you find that in the KGV but you don't find it in the NIV. Uh, another example of this would be what's known as the Comma, comma Johannan, which is in John 5 uh, 7. These are textual variants that, in terms of the, the New Testament manuscript, don't appear in our earliest manuscripts. The, KG, the KGV, the KJV, the KJV, the KJV, yeah, the KJV um, um, was using the text that the church had at the time, which was dated to the 10th century. Uh, and it was it was a translation based upon uh, a guy called Erasmus, his third critical edition of the New Testament, which was translated into English and contained passages, some passages that were actually uh, put into the text in the 15th century, like the Common Johannan in John 5, 7. Now, as a Muslim, when you hear that, what you hear is, ah, well, the Bible's been corrupted and therefore it's not trustworthy. That's what you hear because that's what you've been told to hear inside the mosque. Now, there's a couple of points to respond to that that I would have to say. Firstly, we Christians don't look at our Bible like you look at the Quran. You look at the Quran like it's Nazil. It's literally ad in the word of Allah. It goes from Allah, it goes to the angel Gabriel, it goes to Muhammad, and then it goes to the scribe, and there's no human influence. That's correct. Right. Now, the fact of the matter is that there is evidence of human influence in the text of the Quran. We'll do that but later. But that's not the topic. We can do that next time. Go on. The Christians, one, the, the Christians look at the Bible differently. We do not believe that the Bible is the ad verbatim word of God. That is not our belief. We, when, when I invite you to the Christian faith, I'm inviting you to believe in something radically different from what you already believe. I'm inviting you to believe that human beings wrote in their own words, inspired by the Holy Spirit, what God was doing in history, what God values, what is true about God and about the way that we should live. But it was human men writing in their words. There's no promise of divine protection. Now, the, the, the reason why I trust the New Testament is because these two examples that we've given in John 8, uh, the Common Johannan in, in the first epistle of John, 
what do what do they actually evidence? They don't evidence that the entirety of the New Testament manuscript is corrupt. It actually doesn't evidence that. It doesn't evidence that. It doesn't prove that. Because what happened is what scholars call the tenacity of the text. The New Testament was written by many people in many different places at the same time. There was no systematic control. And what we found when that occurs is that there are many differences between those manuscripts, but the differences themselves are as varied as the manuscripts. And so it's very easy to identify where the text is corrupted. Very easy. So much so that we Christians honestly, openly, and without any embarrassment, show these texts to the world. That's why you know about it. So, so, there is, so what you're saying is, okay, that's fair play, that's actually a, that's a fair answer, yeah? So there is a difference. What, included in that question, if you don't mind, if yeah. you don't mind, Bob, yeah? Is that, this is the main thing that I come to, right? So now, if there is differences, you're fine to say, you know, your, your claim is that it's not serious enough to change the main message of the Bible. Is that, is that what you're implying? The, 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 in, in, terms of, in terms of Bart Ehrman, yeah. who's one of the leading critical scholars on the New Testament. He's not, a, a, as you well know, he's not a friend of Christians, he's an apostate, he's made his career out of um, attacking the, 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 the fundamentalist position uh, held by some Christians. So, in terms of Bart Ehrman, Bart Ehrman himself states that no essential Christian doctrine is affected by any textual variant. That's the position of Bart Ehrman. It's also the position of uh, Dan, um, uh, Daniel Wallace, who's a, 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 a doctorate of the equivalent to Bart Ehrman. So it's that, also yeah, the ahead. position of Bruce Metzger. Yeah, yeah. So the position of scholarship yeah. is yes, there are manuscript problems, but no, they don't affect essential Christian So there's verses doctrine. missing and I think uh, stories and there's whole books missing, correct, at times. But the fact is... Hey, when you say old books, what do you mean? No, what I mean is uh, there's, the New Testament is made of smaller books, is this correct? Yes. Now, are there books that exist in the Codex Sinaiticus that don't exist in the New Testament? Oh, sorry, in the NIV. Um, in, in, in the Codex Sinaiticus, the canon had not been formalized by the church. Okay. And so there are books included in Codex Sinaiticus that the church, when it formalized the canon, didn't include. So there are, okay. Yeah, go on. So, so, so for example, the existing New Testament has had verses and books removed from it today because the Codex Sinaiticus has been found as the oldest existing, fullest New Testament. Testament, and it doesn't have those verses and books in there, correct? No, the, the, the scholarship, the scholarship that leads to these, the, the scholarship that leads to these kind of manuscript variations, doesn't just base itself on the Codex Sinaiticus. It, it does it based upon every available text that we can. That came later, of course. No, no, not just that came later. That actually came earlier. The smaller part. So right? it compares. It compares fragmentary evidence. Fragments, it compares yes. Paul pamphlets. It compares uh, the entirety of of New Testament documents that we have, I it compares the them, smaller parts that it had, identifies et cetera, et cetera. the variations right. and, finds and, then, and then highlights those variations. Now hold on one second. Go on, go on, go on. The fact of the matter is that the vast majority of variations in the text, scholars have already said, don't have any play at all. They're not translatable. They can't even be translated because they're differences in spellings. Okay. Now if we take the same standard, and this is what the people who are listening to this really Before need to Before you go there, can I just ask one more question? No, 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 let me, let, no, no. If we take this standard of textual criticism yeah. and we apply it to the manuscript evidence that we have of the Quran, uh, we find the Quran has a similar problem. I don't, I don't believe that's the truth, uh, Bob, but however, yeah. let me get on to my next question. Like okay. I said, by the way, it's not a next question, it's a question to do with the whole question I've asked you. Now, Bob, if we tomorrow found something older than the Codex Sinaiticus, yeah. yes, that pulled into question the existing verses that are in even the NIV, yeah. we could say that we could end up with a Bible. You could be following false verses or stories that don't actually exist in the Bible today. Is that? Do you understand where I'm coming from or not? Do you understand you do. the question? But I, I, I have to say this, that, yeah. your, that the premise of your question is faulty because we've already found documents that are older than Sinaiticus. No, 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 I meant, sorry. The oldest, I meant that if they're missing, if they're missing, because look, and yeah, Codex and, and Sinaiticus then, is missing then, verses and, then, and, and stories. I'll just finish off. Okay. They're, finish, they're missing verses and stories in the Codex Sinaiticus. Yeah. So we updated the Bible of today. Tomorrow, if we find a book that is older than the Codex Sinaiticus, yeah. a fuller version of the New Testament, it is possible that we'll find out there's other verses and stories that are also problematic in the existing NIV. That's understandable, well, yes? That's theoretically possible, but you've got to understand that as Christians, we don't base our faith upon what the, the, the Bible says alone. The, the scriptures were born of the church, and the church had to test me before the New Testament was written. 
Okay. And that testimony predates the verbal. The, 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 verbal. Yes, it was a verbal testimony. Verbal testimony. That was the hadith. The, 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 <laughs> I'll throw that in there. But the difference is, but the difference is, the hadith were written 240 years later. Oh, oh, the New oh, Testament, Testament was written anyway. within the no, lifetime no, 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 of the apostles. Sorry, sorry, no, hold on one second. Oh, no, no, Coming back to the New Testament. It's not very fair. The New it? Testament. The New Testament was written within within 90 AD. That is the consensus of Bart Ehrman, Bruce Metzger, Dan Wallace. 90 AD. So the New Testament I'd is far closer. <laughs> yeah, do I'd please. Have to check that. And so should your viewers. The, the the New Testament is far closer to the reality of the time that it describes than the Hadiths. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure Listen. Me. So the fact. <laughs> your wife called, you know. Wait, Listen. So the fact of the matter is, if there was text found older than the Codex Sinaiticus, which there are. Which no 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 no. What's, fuller wait, text. I'm talking about older. Yeah, theoretically. Hypothetically. We're doing a, we're doing a minor We're talking minor about okay. hypothetically. Hypothetically. If yep, we found yep, yep. a book yep, older that, than the okay, Codex Sinaiticus. Experiment. What's the question? That's fine. No. Let me clarify for the subject. Yep. Uh, if there was a book oh, found older than the Codex Sinaiticus. Then today we could even disprove the NIV. There could be serious problems with the books and the trust in the verses your, of the your, NIV. Your is this question, correct or not? Your question is faulty at many, many uh, levels. This is what you said earlier on, Bob. That's why it I'm is. Confused. It's faulty because it's faulty because you're assuming that the NIV is some kind of authoritative text. Your your question is faulty because you're assuming that my faith has to work like your faith. No, no. The no, fact that there are textual variants in Quranic manuscripts is no, a problem no, no. for Bob, Islam. See that, textual variants. In the okay, Bible, Bob, Bob, textual Bob, variants in the Bible, because it's textual simple. variants in the Bible yeah. are only a problem for us if they affect essential doctrine, which they so, do not. That's what I'm saying. That tomorrow, if a book is found older than the Codex Sinaiticus, and there's textual variances that make serious are we issues talking, with the. Are, are we talking second, about a new book? Let me finish. Another book? That, no, no, no. We're talking about older manuscript. An older manuscript. Older than Codex Sinaiticus. Yes, that which we already have. the core. Yeah. A, a, a fuller one. That affects the core of Christianity. Would you then admit that that's a danger? If, Is that if a danger? Theoretically, to to to, to honour the the, the 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 thought experiment, because I often ask that's people fair. to do thought experiments. Yeah. If we found an ancient manuscript that that <laughs> theologically contradicted what Christians believe today, that would certainly pose some difficult questions. However, the assumption is that such a text exists. Of course. We haven't found such That's a text. Fair. Fair. We don't know where the, uh, any such theoretical text That's exists. Fair. But the risk exists. That's all I was asking you. Well, I'm, not trying to, I'm not trying to pull the pass on. I'm just, just saying clearly. The, the, the thing is, we Christians are constantly looking for older texts. However, what we find is that as we found older manuscripts, they have confirmed what we believe rather than disproven what we believe. And furthermore, when when we find ancient manuscripts of the Quran, this contradicts the doctrine of Nazil. Now I would now, dare Bob. you, now, Bob. Dawa, now, Bob. to broadcast now, Bob. this without I, editing or without change. No editing I'll, be checking. But, Bob, I'll be checking. Check this, Bob. And Bob. they're all part of the Islamic Bob, Dawah team. So, so there is no Islamic Dawah team, Bob. Okay. But take care. It's take been care a pleasure. Yourself, Have take a care. nice day. Bye-bye. See you later, JC. So what I would say to you guys, like, if you're going to create a standard, you have to be consistent to the standard that you create. If you're going to say something like that the textual variants of New Testament manuscripts mean that we must reject the Christian faith, then that means that what you're saying is that the Quran is wrong when Muhammad was instructed to go to the people of the book and to tell them to judge by what is in their book. If Muhammad is instructed to go and tell the people of the book to judge by what is in their book, Allah is assuming that the book is reliable. So who is right, Allah or the Muslims?